5G and AR are coming together to help doctors better prepare for complex surgeries. The National University Health System is the first in Singapore to do this, which it says makes medical services better and faster. I take, for example, this small chip. When paired with an AR headset, doctors can accurately pinpoint veins when drawing blood. And this minimizes discomfort for groups like children or patients undergoing chemotherapy. Using the same headset, doctors can simulate an image of a patient's organ to visualize the medical conditions and risks involved. This helps them train up junior doctors and better explanation for the patients as well. So far, the tech has been used in close to 100 cases and plans are underway to scale this. The system is up and commissioned and we will use it in 10 of our operating theatres in the main building itself as well as uh, four of the inpatient wards within the hospital and this is part of the phase one of the 5G upgrade for NUHS and then of course phase two we are looking at additional projects as well as additional infra development um, for within the hospital cluster. More, we're joined by Professor Chan Manchun from the Department of Computer Science at the NUS School of Computing. Uh, Professor, we just heard there how uh, uh, doctors can use AR and 5G to help prepare for complex surgeries. Now, since last July, Singapore has had fully covered standalone 5G. So for doctors, this matters. For businesses, what sort of opportunities can they look forward to? Well, um, I guess one of the, the, the clear and easy to understand um, benefit of um, 5G over the earlier generations is that now you can move large amount of data uh, between your end devices um, and usually the mobile end devices that are running on wireless network and the cloud infrastructure that can provide all the computing uh, resources, right? So once you have that, your mobile devices, of course, have a smaller form factor. You can move them around easily. And so you can now think about really um, uh, this, uh, reconsidering how you deploy your application. For example, like without, without your 5G, if you were to run your AR, VR, you will need a wire. And that makes everything much more difficult to deploy. So the capability to transfer data wirelessly and quickly really helps to help people like, you know, redesign um, different systems. Whether could it be like have the machines work better together in all your industry IoT applications? or to control your cars and drones better in your smart transportation, or as you show in the video clip, uh, by now you can actually have um, your processing done very close to the end user, so that now you can have, have a lot of processing AR stuff running very close to the doctors or to the patients, and then you can get a lot of information in, in a short time. So, so I, I guess I also want to kind of emphasize that um, you should not think of 5G as a single like, you know, a milestone, it is actually continuously being, um, you know, um, upgraded, evolved. The standards actually are not done yet, and you can expect to see more improvement in the near future. And people are talking about, you know, what are the wish list we want for 6 Gs. So this is continue to going to be get better over time. Professor Chan, presumably that improved efficiency, you know, in latency, in capacity, and speed. Uh, the delivery of data and so on, it's going to give us an edge. Can you put into context for us what that competitive edge is going to be? Um, I, I guess it gives you the opportunity to, as I mentioned previously, to really um, think about how you can um, um, you know, collect lots of data uh, you know, in a very easy manner and be able to push your computation such that now you can have a much faster reaction time. And I guess Singapore being a very small country, it, it is potentially, you know, uh, on paper much easier for us to make all these changes. We're always known as the, the good place to run, um, uh, to have to head off a, a, a test rate for new deployment, new ways of running applications, just because you know, they're so dense. And I guess you know, the country as a whole is kind of um, very keen to try new technologies. So I guess we have the edge uh, from the point of view. Uh, Professor, I'm going to be a little bit simplistic here. When you talk about, say, faster reaction time between different machines, and you mentioned this, it will help machines work better together, faster together. Mm -hmm. This means the machines will yeah. need to be compatible uh, on many levels. Again, I speak as a layman. Is this compatibility 
an issue going forward. Our company is going to be having to think about we, we cannot afford to have, say, lower grade or more obsolete machines because other people do not have them and they are depending on 5G or 6G and we are just not ready for that. Yes. Sure, yes. This is, I mean, um, you know, um, uh, deploying new technology is always challenging because uh, you have to worry about compatibility and you have to upgrade all the equipments. So the entire ecosystem has to improve. Right, whether is it the telcos that provide faster network, the device manufacturers have to upgrade the devices. You need more computation, so you need to work with the cloud providers to hopefully can post your applications. You need um, you know, new new devices. So all these things come in, into play. So you need really the entire ecosystem. And we kind of would expect that, you know, like I think um, as you mentioned, um, that you know uh, there's uh, uh, telcos and the cloud service providers and the equipment um, manufacturers, they will come together and uh, kind of provide a more um, uh, complete end-to-end -end system. Of course, you always need the application developer to provide the context. And, and I guess, you know, besides the issue with um, upgrading all the equipments, the issue of compatibility, which is why we need a standard, there's always this issue with, um, you know, security. Uh, 5G is supposed to be, you know, um, uh, you know or have, supposed to have addressed many of the issues that we are aware, uh, security vulnerabilities that we are aware that exist in the 4G network. But the uh, 5G network is itself, again, a much more complex system. So, so security so uh, and the accompanying, systems, uh, pardon me, yes, so yes. it would be security plus the right kind of regulation to ensure security on all levels. Thanks Correct. so much for joining yes. us, Professor right, yes. Chan Man Chun from oh. the NUS School of Computing. Thank you.